So Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is getting DLC. $25, 48 tracks, 12 cups, uh, six different you know slices of releases all the way through 2023 with the first uh, wave coming fairly soon. And this is actually really, really good news and was one of the big surprise announcements during that uh, Nintendo Direct we just had. But the thing is, something isn't quite right when it comes to this DLC. Something feels off. And we gotta talk about this and also why, hey, the next Mario Kart game obviously isn't gonna be coming until next gen. And that that actually might be Mario Kart 10 because we already have Mario Kart 9. Now, before I talk about this further, I wanna remind you that we are giving away a Switch OLED, a PlayStation 5, or an Xbox Series X to one lucky winner. All you have to do is go down to the gleam.io link down in the description or the pinned comment to enter. And yeah, it's basically winner's choice. It's to choose one of the current generation consoles. And no, I don't wanna hear any more complaints that Switch isn't current generation. Guys, it's Nintendo's current generation system, just like PlayStation 5 is for Sony and Xbox Series is for Microsoft. So can we just stop now? It's literally the most recent Nintendo platform. All right, moving on. Let's talk about this for a moment. They announced this DLC in quite surprising fashion, and some people made some notes I noticed during our live uh, chat about it, because uh, we were live streaming this and live reacting, and I kind of ignored the chatter because I wasn't really paying super close attention to the actual tracks and courses. I'm in the middle of a live stream, so I'm focused on just the shock of the moment, combined with obviously trying to make sure things remain entertaining. Uh, so yeah, I obviously did not take a long look at this DLC. In fact, the thing I focused on probably the most after the Direct was over was the fact that it's being included with Nintendo Switch Online. Now, yes, you can still buy it separately for 25, but now it's part of the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack as well, which does seem to open the door to the idea that Nintendo might be putting all of their future paid DLC on this service. If it turns out that Pokemon Legends Arceus has paid DLC, and that gets added to the service, I think that's the final proof we need that Nintendo's planning to do this moving forward, making the expansion pass actually a credible, if not incredible, deal. That being said, we need to talk about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's actual DLC because one thing that was notable in the tracks they showed off in the footage, which you're gonna see a ton of and on repeat here, is that it doesn't quite look right. When you consider that Mario Kart 8 was obviously a Wii U game ported over to the Nintendo Switch and already had a paid DLC pack back then, the paid DLC pack back then added new tracks in as well, like the Animal Crossing track and obviously Hyrule. And what's interesting about these tracks and these courses that were added the first time they did DLC for this is that they were just as high quality standard in terms of visuals as the original tracks you could definitely tell it was the mario kart 8 team that made this content this time around i can already tell you where all these tracks are coming from i can already tell you why visually it does not look even remotely close to as good as the rest of the tracks in mario kart 8 because yeah sure they're tracks from older games and we could try to make excuses but reality is Mario Kart 8 already has tracks from older games and they look utterly fantastic because they've been modernized. These tracks, they've been modernized all right for Mario Kart Tour. What's very clear is that all of these tracks, at least that we have seen to this point, are coming directly out of Mario Kart Tour. Now Mario Kart Tour already gets a lot of tracks added all the time. And yes, they're not as visually pleasing as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Likely so Mario Kart Tour can run on a wide range of devices. Sure, my iPhone 13 uh, Pro here might be more powerful than a Nintendo Switch, but that doesn't make the iPhone 8, which can also play Mario Kart Tour, able to, you know, output the same visual fidelity as a Nintendo Switch. So because of that, and because Nintendo's trying to make sure Mario Kart Tour runs well on a wide variety of smartphone devices, the visuals aren't as polished or as pretty or as visually pleasing as they are in Mario Kart 8. And for the most part, that's fine. Mario Kart Tour is still a good time. But the issue, of course, is they are now just taking courses that they have created or remastered or redone for a mobile app and just slapping them in Mario Kart 8. And I can argue right now that that isn't being done by the actual team that made Mario Kart 8. Now, I do think the team behind 
Mario Kart 8 is actually working on the next, you know, full brand new Mario Kart game. I'm, I, I'm under no pretense that the next Mario Kart game isn't some in development somewhere, either by a small team, if not the full Mario Kart team. But the thing is, they obviously had whoever handled Tour or some other side team working on bringing these courses from Tour over and thinking, hey, this is okay. We already gave you these courses basically for free on your phone. Let's charge you for them to add them to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And I don't have an issue with charging for them. My issue is when you're not going to deliver the same fidelity that we're used to. Now you could argue it's 25 bucks for 48 courses. That's still a ton of courses. And maybe some of those courses do end up with higher visual qualities. But that doesn't really seem to be the, 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 the thing here. There's 48 courses on Mario Kart Tour. I'm guessing we're getting all of them. Uh, what's interesting, of course, is that Mario Kart Tour is and has been an extremely well-supported app by Nintendo. And, well, every game being with, with tracks being added to Mario Kart 8 is considered part of the core Mario Kart franchise. That includes Mario Kart Tour tracks. So the key nine above you, I probably already know where I'm going with this, Mario Kart Tour is Mario Kart 9. In the same way that Mario Kart Double Dash, you know, could be considered a numbered version back then. So this is why when we've seen rumors that have floated out there about, about Mario Kart X and Mario Kart Crossroads and all the things that surrounding the number numeral number 10, reality is the next Mario Kart game probably will be called Mario Kart 10 or X or Cross or some sort of form that's that, that's being a play on being the 10th Mario Kart game in the mainline series. Now look, Mario Kart 9 being a mobile game I don't think is an insult. Obviously with Nintendo focusing most of their development teams on a single platform, if there was going to be another mobile only Mario Kart, it made sense for it to be in an app on a phone. And Mario Kart Tour again is a lot of fun. And again, I don't have a problem with bringing courses from Mario Kart Tour over. The issue, of course, is why are we seeing lower fidelity? I mean, I know why, because it's cheaper, right? It's cheap to do what they're doing, and they get to now make extra money on top. It's just, shouldn't we expect better? Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the number one selling Mario Kart of all time. It's the number one selling Switch game of all time, and now it's been multiple generations. So I can argue that even if you want to base you know, take the courses originally off of Mario Kart Tour and use that as the start to bring courses over to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, then why don't we also, I don't know, maybe at least retexture them, up res them correctly so things don't, I mean, even, even just watching some of the textures in the game, you could tell that it's just not properly up res from a smart device. I'm, I'm really disappointed here, and maybe things will change by the time the Wave 1 comes out, and all of a sudden there'll be massive visual upgrades and all that to match the rest of Mario Kart 8, or there won't. And I'm leaning towards the fact that there won't be, because they know millions and millions and millions of people are going to buy this DLC or get the online expansion pass, or who already have it, and just play this stuff for free. And I'm guilty of it as well. I already know that I will be partaking in getting this DLC, but part of it is because I need to explore deeper into this thought process that this doesn't look as good. And I, obviously, when I play it on my TV, on live stream with you guys, am I going to end up caring that it doesn't look as good? We've talked about how gameplay is king in the past, and this has made me extremely forgiving of Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now, we've talked in the past about how the visual fidelity of things like, you know, Pokemon Legends Arceus ended up bothering me less and less the more I played, because the gameplay was that engaging, that addicting, and that amazing, where it's like, look, I do expect better visuals from a Switch game than what we get with Pokemon Legends Arceus, especially an exclusive game. We've already seen Monster Hunter Rise and others look way better, Unfortunately, uh, that's not what happened here with Legends Arceus, but I love the gameplay so much, I kinda sorta forgot about the visuals. And Mario Kart 8 Deluxe already has amazing gameplay and is arguably the best Mario Kart game ever made already, even without this DLC. So it's possible that while I'm playing the game, I end up not caring that it doesn't look as good. Or 
maybe I will care. Because it could be extremely jarring when you're doing online tournaments and you're bouncing between the new courses and the old courses and you might notice these old courses look so much better than the new ones. And usually newer content looks better than older. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 DLC, anybody? So this is a, a very weird approach for Nintendo. From a business perspective, I get it. It's a cheap way to add a bunch of courses, make a whole bunch of money and call it a day. And maybe it ends up being well enough that it doesn't matter. But from the fan perspective, this is the number one selling game on Switch. And we're getting the second paid DLC for this game. The first of which came on Wii U. And shouldn't we expect more? I think that's the interesting conversation point is shouldn't we expect more? So I actually want to ask you guys, do you think it's acceptable what they've done? Clearly just porting over a bunch of mobile tracks, or do you think they should have maybe even if they use that as a base, bumped up the visual fidelity and actually had someone rework all the textures. And I don't want to hear how hard this is. We literally have solo fans recreating entire games in Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5. Nintendo's a multi-billion dollar company. They clearly could have put a team on this to make this look better if they had wanted to. They just didn't because they didn't think, hey, if we up the visual quality, it's really going to up our sales more than we would have got anyways. So they didn't view it as a sound investment. So from my business perspective, they're probably right. But I'm just curious, do you find this to be acceptable? Also, do you agree with my, my, my claim, basically, that Mario Kart Tour is actually Mario Kart 9? And if you do, do you think they're going to call the next one Mario Kart 10? Mario Kart, Kart X, Crossroads, or to just use some other sort of name to describe it. You know, some people have talked about Mario Kart Ultimate as an example. I know some people do think the next Mario Kart is going to be sort of a Smash Bros style game where it's going to bring a whole bunch of Nintendo IPs together because they've already done that in prior DLC with Mario Kart 8, bringing in obviously Animal Crossing and Zelda. Uh, I do want to note though, Splatoon as well, by the way, I do want to note that I don't think they would drop the Mario Kart branding. I think Mario Kart as a brand is too big, but I do think they could still make it a smash Nintendo Kart sort of thing by keeping the Mario Kart branding. I, I, it's just such a important brand. It would be like, oh, if Animal Crossing is going to bring in a bunch of Nintendo characters, like literal Nintendo characters, then uh, yeah, oh my gosh, we can't call it Animal Crossing anymore, except you totally would because the IP name's too big. So yeah, I, I, I think things are going to end up being just fine. Um, I'm not sure, you know, my stance on this is I expect better, but they, they, they know I'm buying it anyways. So call me part of the problem if you would like. I'm also a Nintendo YouTuber, and I will say, if I wasn't a Nintendo YouTuber, this might be the thing that made me not get the DLC. Uh, this is one of those, because we do YouTube, because we do live streams, because people are going to want me to play it, and I need to more closely examine it for the channel, I'm going to get it. But if I was a standalone consumer, I'm not so sure I'd get this DLC. One, I'm already perfectly happy with what Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is. But also, ah, man, I play these courses on Mario Kart Tour already. Do I really want to pay extra to have the exact same experience just on my TV? I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jams from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Give me your full thoughts on this DLC and all the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe stuff. Again, not trying to poo-poo on this, by the way. I'm actually really glad we're getting this DLC. I'd rather have it than not even in the the, the form it is at the moment. Uh, it obviously was a complete surprise and nobody thought this was going to happen. So I am actually really thrilled that we're getting this. This is actually one of the announcements I like the most out of that Nintendo Direct. I mean, obviously, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is a really, really big deal, despite being rumored forever. That's really, really awesome. Nintendo Switch Sports, Fire Emblem 3, oh, Fire Emblem Warriors. Like, I remember to put the Warriors name in Three Hopes. Uh, that I mean, again, so many great announcements from that Direct. And this, I, I, I think, is one of those highlight announcements. And I'll probably end up really enjoying the tracks in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I just... I don't know. Am I being weird and saying if this wasn't like something I did on YouTube, I wouldn't get it? I, I'm always torn on that kind of thing, right? Like trying to balance what I would do as a real consumer versus what I would do as a YouTuber because it's been blended for so long. 
I think you guys can forgive me for struggling a little bit and trying to decide what really would I do if I wasn't on YouTube because it's hard to know at this point because I've been doing this for so long. Anyways, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next video.